talking about Oxford, ask God for excitement. Okay, if you're the kind of person, generally some people are not excited about Oxford. Some people are just excited about money and sex and clubbing and all that. That's, and let we got to be honest with ourselves. I'm excited about certain things, you're excited about certain things. But some people are excited about God's word and some people are not excited about God's word yet. So if you're not excited about God's word yet, then ask God. Say, God, I want to be excited about your word, but the fact is I am not yet. And ask and you will receive. And what say I will receive? I will receive. Okay. Turn to God's word. And this is one thing the devil doesn't want to do for us. He doesn't want us to be excited about God's word. We are excited about crazy, crazy things. We see our celebrity or someone that we admire, we get so excited. But we are not, many of us are not excited about God's word yet. Everyone say yet. Yes. I use the word yet for a reason because I believe that all of us can come to that place. When you see God's word or you, you pass a shop, a shop law, and suddenly a shop is named, the name of the shop is God's word, I think we are excited. I get excited. When I see a shop called Shalom, I go, whoa, Shalom! Whoa! Things like that. Jehovah or whatever God's word. And you, you just get excited, I mean, I get excited. But not everyone is there yet, but I pray that everyone comes to that place. And not just excited because that verse in the scriptures, or maybe the boss is a Christian, but what does that word say for me in my life? Because the word of God has power. Say amen. amen. Look to your friend and tell your friend, there is so much power in the word of God. Come on. There's so much power in the word of God. Yes. And when we have this revelation, then we will, not, we will not look at God's word the same. Never the same. We will look at God's word and say, this is different, this is something else. I must pause. I must stop. You glance through your, your Facebook, you know the, the, the feed, the news feed. You come to God's word, you will pause. When you come to the place of knowing there is power in God's word. When you come to the picture of a sexy girl, a lot of men pause. Because they're excited about that. We are just honest, they're just excited about that sexy picture. So we can be one God to give us the same kind of excitement when it comes to His Word. Whether in church like this or even in your own quiet time, when you are reading His Word, it's excited. So Matthew chapter 22, verse 39, and not just this verse, but all of the verses as you read in your life from this time onwards, get excited. And the second is like it. And this is what Jesus says. And the second, he spoke about the first, he spoke about love. Everyone say love. Love, love. love is one of God's favorite words. Maybe his favorite word. Because God is love. He speaks about how important it is to love God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Go forth to be the second kind of love. And this is the second kind of love. And the second is like it. Love your neighbors as yourself. Lift your hands up if you do not love yourself. If I show me your neighbor, if you think your neighbor doesn't love himself or herself, everybody loves themselves. If you are a regular person, if the screw is not loose up here, if you are normal emotionally, you will love yourself. Say amen. amen. Say it louder, amen. amen. You dress up because you love yourself. You chose that man because you think he is good because you love yourself. You chose that career because you love yourself. You chose that hairstyle, you spend money on that hair color because you love yourself. And I'm not saying don't love yourself because the scripture says love yourself. Say, I must love myself. Come on. I must love myself. I must love myself. We love ourselves. Naturally, we love ourselves. I love myself. I dress up because I love myself. I have braces on because I love myself. Are you listening? Yes. So it's, it's something that, that God has created us. We just have God has given us hands and legs. God has given us this natural instinct that we are to love ourselves. No one taught a baby to care for itself, but the baby naturally cries. How many of you? A baby who doesn't cry is not a normal baby. A baby who cries is a normal baby. Praise God for the gift of crying. You know why a baby cries? Because a baby naturally loves himself. Feed me! Clean me! I'm sweaty! Change me! I'm wet! Me, 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 me. Each time baby cries, it's not because ah, I love you, mommy. No! <laughs> I love me, mommy, change me! I love me, I'm hungry, feed me! Are you listening? So don't talk a baby, so it's, it's natural. Everyone say it's natural. natural. And it's natural means God created.
created us that way. We were created to love ourselves and there is nothing wrong with that. Look to your friend and say, please love yourself properly. Come on. Please love yourself properly. Don't love your husband more than you love yourself. Don't love your child more than you love yourself. Are you listening? Yes. You've got to love yourself. I don't believe anyone can love anyone else if they don't love themselves well. You've got to love yourself. Right? If you are, and because everything that God wants for us, the devil wants the opposite. Are you listening? If you know the tactic of the devil, you know the heart of God, you will know this truth. If God wants you to forgive, the devil wants you to not forgive. Get it? The devil does not want you to succeed in life. The devil doesn't want you to succeed in life. Are you, are you following? If God wants you to marry this man, the devil wants you to marry that man. Are you following? The devil always wants the opposite. So God wants you to love yourself. So there are people who are sick. We have to pray for them. They do not love themselves. People who do not love themselves is not natural, not normal, and it's not of God. And today that's not my sermon. Okay, my sermon is something else. Entitled. Trust God's wit. W-I-T. Have you heard of the word wit? Is that what word? Wit means intelligent, funniness. God is witty. God is intelligent. God is smart. But that's actually... W-I-T here is an acronym of something that I'm going to share with you. That I point. Okay, everyone say trust. Let's trust God's wit. Come on. Trust, trust God's, God's wit. Have you heard of the word wit? Witty. Witty. Wit. A wit person. A, a, a funny, intelligent person. And then, why are you waiting for so long? God is witty. You ask God for something and He's not answering your prayer, He's not making fun of you. He is not bullying you because He's intelligent and He's good and He has a reason for doing so. You can say amen. amen. I want to get married, but He's just, He's not telling me that. Let's wait. So trust God. I don't know if you're dying to know what's the acronym. I'm telling you straight away. Okay? <laughs> God's will. Let me just check down my notes here. God's will. W for way. Everyone say, trust God's way. Trust God's way. His way is the best way. God says, take a plane. Means take a plane. Even though MH370 were missing, but still, God says, take a plane. Means take a plane. Are you listening? Yes. That was the train instead. God's way is the best way. God says, read this book. No, no, I don't read that book. I want to read, do something else to fall back. God says, read. God says, read that book. Means read that book. W for way. God's way is better than anybody's way. Amen. Are you listening? Come on. Are you listening? Yes. So w is for way. What's the next alphabet? I. I. Those who follow me, you know what is I. It's wit, W-I-T. Instrument. Everyone say instrument. 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 If God wants to use Tina for my life, then I allow God to use Tina. <coughs> no, no, I don't want Tina. I want Jerry to be used. Yeah. Are you listening? If God wants Vivian Gampang to be the, the next senior pastor, who are you to say, no, you shouldn't be the next senior pastor? If God wants him to be the instrument, God will be him. Who can say Amen? Amen. God's instrument and, and God's always God's ways are in the kingdom of God is so funny, it's so witty, it's so often the opposite in comparison to the natural way. You know that, right? God says the first shall be last. It's not the first has to be first. But God says no, the first will be last. How many have heard that before? How many have heard that before? God's ways is very often, the kingdom of God is very often the opposite of the kingdom of this earth. So God decided to use that instrument with a thing, a person or a program, then just allow him to use his instrument because he knows best. Say Amen. amen. What's the next thing? T. 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 W I T. The next T. You must get Albert. Thank you. T. T for time. Everyone say God's time is the perfect time. God's time is the perfect time. I want to get pregnant now. Your whole life is going to be a mess. It's going to be a mess if you are pregnant now. I know the time. No, no, I want to be a rich now. No, 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 you cannot be rich now. You're going to be rich now. You're going to lose your wife. You're going to lose everything that you have, which is good right now. you got to wait because the time is not now. Because God's time is the best time. You can say amen. amen. What happened to the people of Israel when they wanted a king? And they says, no, I'm your king. No, no, we don't want you. We want a human earthly king. And we don't just want a king, we want a king now. Are you listening? And God says, okay, okay, fine. You want a king? I'll give you a king in my time. Said, no, I want a king now. And what they had? Saul. But God had whom in mind? David. 
and people suffered for a season. Are you following? So W. Trust God's what? Way. Way. God's way. It's the best way. I trust God's what? Instrument. Let Him decide whom you want to use, what you want to use. You want to use that company who are using, I'm going to be rich in that company. Said, no, you are going to be rich in that company. Stay there. Don't leave. No, 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 but in common sense, Lord, okay. I, I know whether that you, I think. Mm. God's W, God's I, God's D. God's ways, God's instrument, God's time. Let's go back to the beginning. That was just fast forward. I spoke a little bit about babies, babies. We were all babies. How many of you were not babies before? All of us were babies, right? <laughs> How many of you were born? You're 30 years old already. We were all babies. I'll tell my daughter, I said, I, I, I was 11, please. I'll tell my son, I was 9, please, I know. You know, and I'm going to use this for the rest of my life. And you get 17, I was 17, please. And, and that's a fact. We were all there before, so we can understand. I, I can tell my mother, hey, I was 60, please. I can tell that. But she can tell me, I was 44, please. You know, so you, if you are older than someone else, you have the advantage. And that's a fact. You've been through it, so you know that. So everyone of us were babies, and we all, we all were younger, we all were very mean, we all thought of ourselves. We were like very much like Beyonce's song, 2003 song, Me, Myself, and I. Have <laughs> you heard of Beyonce's 2003 song, The Hit, Me, Myself, and I? And some of us, we are in our 40s and 30s, we are still Me, Myself, and I which is not of God. And God, is, God, God did not inspire Beyonce to write that song. It was her own father. I mean, her earthly father, if you do the research, her father wrote that song for her and she wrote together with him. Okay? You, you know that song, right? That song where she sings and she walked backwards. <laughs> you go and check the YouTube video. <laughs> That's me, I guess you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> right? You know that song, right? Go and check. It's, it's a nice song, but it's a very self-centered song written by her father. Uh, all written by her in 2003. Okay, ask your friend now beside you. Are you very much me, myself, and I person? Ask. Are you a me, myself, and I person? Or have you grown up a little bit? Ask your friend. You know, are you still a me, myself, and I person? Or have you grown up a little bit? We are supposed to grow up. We got to start dropping the I. As we mature, we drop the myself. And then talk about mature in the Lord. Amen. God says, love others as you love yourself. I'm talking to, I'm saying this not just about you, about you and I. You're all the same. I'm just like you. I was, you know, I was a little baby crying for my needs. But we've got to drop that I. We've got to we've got to drop myself, and we've got to drop me. But we are stuck with the me, myself, and I. We are not walking in the path that God wants us to. I get people coming to my house and 11 something of messaging me about 12 midnight. Pastor, I need to speak to someone else. So then I said, Ah, it's my sleeping time. Or oh, please leave me alone or shut my phone. The police will tell me, Stop your me, myself, and I syndrome. This person really needs to speak to you. Just go and speak to her. Are you listening? So we are stuck with this me, myself, and I because that's how we were in the pond. I get people that's can I see you online yet? And, I, and of course, with the Holy Spirit in our lives, we know genuine and not genuine cases. Who can say amen? amen. Come on, who can say amen? amen. I know I've heard this manipulating me. I know, and I've heard, sorry, I've no time. But we know this is genuine. It even comes in 3 o'clock in the morning. I'll go on Skype and say, come, let me pray with you on Skype. 3 o'clock in the morning. Because we have to fade away this me, myself, and I syndrome. Amen. 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 And life is not just about being happy. I say this again. Life is also about life is not just also right. Life ultimately is about making God happy. Amen. 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 And we want to drop this me. And some of us go, we go further. We love others too. We have me, myself, and I and my family syndrome. We only love family. Others is not just a family. We are to love our families, please. Say amen. amen. But never God says, love yourself. Love your family as yourself. God says, love, we just read that, others. Everyone say others. Others. Others is your family. <coughs> the people that you like. The people that you don't like. The people that smells nice. 
The people that doesn't smell nice. The people that you can hold good conversations with. The people who just doesn't extend when you open your mouth. And God says, others means others. Every other who He put into your life. And God is constantly putting souls into your life and my life. And who can say amen? amen. Love others as you love yourself. But we are very much, me, myself and I. Let's turn to Philippians chapter 2 and to verse 3 and 4. I'll give you another verse that confirms what I'm saying that God is calling us to quit our self, selfishness, self-centeredness. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 to 4, it says, Do nothing. Everyone say nothing. Nothing means nothing, okay? It means everything that I say, I must make sure it's not for my benefit. It's not just for me, for me, for me. Do nothing out of selfish ambition. I know people who love others also for self. Listen, come on, don't fall asleep. If someone's doing it, I don't get you fall asleep. You invested your time to be here, so stay awake. They love, they love others for the benefit of self. How can that be? Yes! They love others for the people can praise them. That's for self! They love others for that. I now have, I have this investment, this person is my friend, this person is mine, I have company. Even love can be manipulated. But God says, do nothing out of selfishness. Let's continue this verse. Powerful words, come on. And a verse that we cannot afford or avoid because it is in the word of God. Do, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. I, I would suggest that we do not do anything at all, even though it's done in the name of love, in the name of the ministry, if we know that we are doing for ourselves. Are you listening? If I'm to choose to be a pastor and I'm doing it to become famous, then I should quit being a pastor because I'm going to be judged. Doubly, are you following? Are you following? That's in the word of God. Those who stand before as teachers and leaders, we're going to be judged doubly. So if you want to do something out of selfishness, don't do it at all. Okay, so this is something important. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility. Everyone say, I'm called to be humble. Come on. I'm called to be humble. Rather in humility, value, oh this is difficult, listen. Value others above yourself. Only humble people can do this. I struggle to do this. When I know that person is not better than me, how can I look at him? How can I, look, I, how can I listen to his words like his words better than mine? I know I'm picking the facts for the truth. Are you listening? But God called us to value others more than ourselves. Without the help of the Holy Spirit, it's impossible. But the good news is, we have the Holy Spirit available, which a lot of us are not using. As I keep on saying, we are putting the Holy Spirit to sleep. Each time He wants to take over the flesh, then The Holy Spirit is there to help us do everything that God is calling us to do. Rather in humility, value others. Value others, even you think you are smarter than Him, but God says value him more than yourself. But I'm better than him, why should I listen to him? You don't have to listen to him, at least hear him out. Get it? Don't just act like you are nothing, don't talk to me. Oh, please, stick to my hands, stick to my hands. You, you don't want to have some fight. I have, I'm doing the master's hello. Stick to my hands. You may not do that, but we act like that very often. <coughs> you may not have here. Mr. A speaks to us and we know that he's like talks rubbish all the time. In the heart they say, I'm just a fool, what are you talking about? Please shut up fast, I've got to go now. Leave me alone. Same thing, we think about something but without saying it, we are actually doing the same thing. Because what is when we see now, it's we sing the second thing and we say it out loud. Are you following? Are you following? This is a powerful verse, hard to chew. I know this verse, most of it is hard to chew, but it's God's word, chew it. Tell your friend, chew it down, come on. Tell your friend, chew it down your throat, come on. Chew it down your throat, come on. Chew, chew it down your throat, yes, eat it up. You see, this is God's word. And I want to grow. You want to go spiritually, you got to chew God's word. Not just the, the blessings, I want to chew the blessing. God says, I want to bless you all, this is what I want. Oh, I chew it, I sip it, mm, I lick it. Because this is what blessings I want. Protection I want. Oh, I will chew this word. Woo! When it comes to Star Wars, I, I want to chew it a bit. Chew it. It's not easy, trust me, I know. I 
can be a very proud person myself. Thank God he's changing me. I'm not changing nobody, I'm changing me. And he wants to change all of us. Thank you, God. First of all, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of the others. Why should I do it? It doesn't benefit me. Why? Why should I? Why should I fetch that person? It doesn't benefit me. Why should I give that put the, the boss a good word even though I know the boss? It doesn't benefit me. He's not my family member. Why should I? If he messes up in the workplace, I have to be blamed. Me, myself, and I. Nearly all the time when we desire something so often at the end of the day, it is for self. We desire for our own satisfaction. Everyone say own satisfaction. We desire something. I want to buy a camera it's for my satisfaction. I mean, I don't want to like things. I don't like cameras. <laughs> I want to buy a camera. Okay. Yeah, I want something. I want a Volvo. Hmm. Serious. Volvo, is it? Volvo? No, no, Volvo. Volkswagen. I don't know him. I'm not a car person. I, I love Volkswagen. I, I look at it. I drive, I see a Volkswagen. So cute. I like it because it's cute. Simply. That's the problem. So I'm desiring a Volkswagen and I know what's going to give it to me. Mm. Are you listening? But trust me, it's purely for my satisfaction. I don't understand how anything can benefit if I get a ball. I get a fox feather, but I'm still desiring. Are you listening? I'm, I, I thank God. I'm going to give God the praise and say, Oh God, thank you. You have given it to me and I will give people advice and stuff. I will do that in Jesus' name. You know, but, but the fact is, the desire for a ball feather is purely for my own satisfaction because I'm very much, I still have my me, my seven eye syndrome. Second, we, we make, we desire things for our own reputation. First is satisf my satisfaction. Why do you want a child? Come on. When I first, my wife and I were first wanted a child, it was nothing but, I want to love this child, huh? Not even want to talk about the child. It was about us. We want to be parents. I want to be like, I don't know, I want to feel pregnant, nine months, please. For the first six months, you know, you start the period came, she cried. Period came, she cried. I don't know how to handle this woman. Six months, for six months, she cried. You start period came, she cried. She wanted to be a mother, not because she wanted to love a child, trust me. Never had a mother who said, I want to be very good, I want to be too loved, my child. No, no, no. You want to feel me. You want to feel what it feels to be a mother. Get it? All my friends are pregnant. I also want to be pregnant. It's me. It's nothing to do The love of the baby will come. Well, come, you see the baby, then you'll start loving the child. But no mother wants to get pregnant because they want to love that unseen human being they've got yet. Are you listening? Come on, are you listening? Yes. It's always, it's always because we are humans. And God, God help us. God have mercy on you and I. We do things, we say things, we plan things, we study, we do all kinds of things for own satisfaction, own reputation, and lastly, own benefit. Very often. That is why we need the Holy Spirit. Daily. We want to go this direction for self. We say, go that direction. Go this direction. Without the Holy Spirit, every step we take, every word we say, is very much like how we were when we were a baby. That each time the baby cries for self. And many of us are, are, we are so old, 30, 40, 20 years old, but you have still the baby mentality. Each step you take is for yourself. Each word you open your mouth, each time, each time you type a word on Facebook, is for yourself. That's why you and I we need the Holy Spirit. Say, I need the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Come on. I need the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And that's the truth. Hallelujah. A great example is when individuals do whatever it takes to stay in the friendship, to stay in the marriage, to stay in the relationship. It's great if people do it because they love the other party. Trust me. So often people go crazy about that friendship, that relationship, or that marriage, not for the other party, but for themselves. Are you listening? Very rare. I want to be in a relationship because I love him so much. I'll give you, I'll give you an example. This is a very powerful example. And I always think about this. I say, yeah, we are so chronic. We human beings are so selfish. In a friendship, one doesn't want to be in a friendship. You know why? Come on, don't fall asleep. Don't let the devil ruin your precious moment that you have taken to be here. Wake up! In this name. 
We hold on to a friendship because you'll say, you may, you may not say it out loud, but it's, yeah, it's happening in your head. I've invested so much, I've invested too much in this friendship. Let it go down the drain. It's about me. Or not selling your own. She is so precious. I love her all the other 24. She's such an angel. It's about her, not it's about me. Very often it's about you. I invest like I see. The amount of money I spent on her birthday present. She's been my best friend for five years. I cannot afford to lose her. Too much invested already. I can't, can't let go, can't let go. And if I let go of the friendship, you see, anybody gonna love me as much as she did? It's me! Come on! Let's not pretend I'm talking something that's just about me. I'm not I'm not the one like that. Many of us, if not all, many of us like that. They talk about relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend. A lot of people don't want to break up, not because they love the person, because they don't want to be alone. Are you following? My second girlfriend, she loves me so much, she will do anything for me. She will, Lucia, okay, her best, ex-best friend, Jeremy, you know her. She will do anything for me, I'm like, she, I, she idolized me. I always believe I'm in relationship, in attraction with people, it's always four level. There is admiration. I admire, okay, let's look at this camera. I admire this camera, beautiful camera, but admiration is the first level. I, I, I like it, it's ca eye candy. Eye candy means you like, your eyes like it. Ooh, eye candy, I admire, period, I do nothing. There's no, there's no movement, there's no attraction. That platonic attraction means I'm drawn to it. Wow, I like it. I want to get closer to it. Then there's next level, it's sexual. Oh, I have sex with the camera. I'm a, I'm a pansexual. Pansexual means people have sex with everything under the sun, like Ellie always say. <laughs> okay, so I want to have sex with that. that, that, that. The last will be idolatry. Idolatry means I want to worship this camera. Are you listening? So my ex-girlfriend acted like I was her idol. She idolized me. Get it? Then I just want to told her I can't carry on this relationship with Lucia. It's not possible for various reasons. Three days later, she found another man. Don't talk about admiration. Don't talk about platonic attraction. Talk about sexual. Talk about idol idolatry. She had. She idolized me, but three days later she found another man. Are you following? But all the one and a half years she was with me. I love you, Edmund. You are like the best man ever. You are woo! And an angel, she does all kinds of she will stare at me and idolize me. I'm like a perfect little hero. But three days later she found a man. So she was, it's not about me, it's about her. All that one half years of I love you is about me. I love you because you better love me back. Get it? So if people hold on, people don't want to break up in a relationship because they don't want to be alone. So often it's nothing to do about that person. Can we carry on? Marriage. I'll give you examples of why I so believe that all of us, we are very me, myself and I, which we have to go. A person doesn't want to give up the marriage, a person doesn't want to separate, a person doesn't divorce because they're off their They want to present to society a stable marital status. I don't want to be single. I don't want to call me a divorcee. People call me a whatever, wicked woman, whatever. It's more of I don't want that status as a divorcee. It's always, very often, it's nearly always, it's always me, myself, and I. A parent may say, I love my child so much, I want her to do well in the study. That's why I school her, I love her so much. But a lot of a lot of parents have a trick in their mind. In their saying, I want the, the truth is I want to grow up and so you won't be a you won't be a nuisance to me for the rest of your life. Or maybe some will say, I want you to grow up so you can take care of me and I'm older. It's not me. Come on, I'm a parent. And we are all tempted to do that. I want to raise my child up so well, I want to raise Ethan and Angel up so well that they can serve in ministry with me. And I've said that before. And a lot of parents are like that. Well, I want to take, take care of my child, raise up well so that they will not be a nuisance to society. They will not be a nuisance to me forever, but give me money. They can take care I've heard a lot of parents say, my child can take care of themselves very quickly. They don't have to take care of me. So it's all about self. Don't bother me when you are old. Don't bother me. Just take care of yourself. A wife may say to her husband, I love my husband so much, I want him to stay at home with me, do all the much with his friends. Because his friends are the advantage of him. But the truth of the matter would be, the wife wants a husband for herself and she's merely feeding her insecurities. It's about me. 
It's time to help her go out. She finished the job. He might love his friends more than me. He might not love me less. He don't want me anymore. It's about me, myself, and I. Are you following, guys? And that's not of God. Tell your friends, that is not of God. Come on. That is not of God. And today, if the Holy Spirit reveals to you something, not just today, any day, when the Holy Spirit reveals something to you, if you are wise, in Jesus' name, you and I, we are wise, then we will take this word seriously. Say, God, teach me. Very simple. The crust of the matter I'm saying is, God is calling us to love others as we love ourselves. So each thing that we do and say, we have got to make sure. Holy Spirit, am I just saying it or doing it because I love myself? Show me how to say and do it because I want to love others. My family, my friends, people I like, I don't like, my neighbors, the lost, the rich, the poor, the pretty, the ugly, whoever you want me to love. Hallelujah. Can you turn to Romans chapter 8, please? Another powerful verse. And I believe all of you have heard this verse. And we know that in all things, everyone say, in all things. In all things. Everyone shout, all. 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 Not some things, huh? In all things that God do. As I said earlier, a lot of things that we do, nearly all that we do is for ourselves. But all that God does is for us. All. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him. God's eyes is upon His children. If you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it means you love God. It means you're a child of God. You're a son of God. You're a daughter of God. So everything that God works is for His children. That's why we need to, come, that's why we need to become children of God. That's why we need to meet. We need to accept that man on the cross. Unless you embrace Jesus, you can pray 40, you can fast 40 days, you can pierce your face, whatever, but if you don't accept Jesus, you will never become a child of God based on the word of God. Are you listening? To become a child of God, you need to embrace Jesus. The Bible says when you embrace Jesus as our Savior, you become a child of God. You become a child of God, God, everything that He does, it goes around bringing good into your life. Come on, look at first. All, and we know that in all things, God works for the good. Even though you don't understand why God is allowing that to happen. I don't understand why God is allowing that to happen to me. But whatever God allows to happen, we have to settle with this truth. Why is God taking six years? If God allows you to go to pray for six years, or even ten years, whatever God does is for good. I'm a compulsive masturbator. I'm not. Junto, Sancha, example. If I'm a compulsive masturbator, I've been praying for God to help me quit masturbating, but I can't stop. I must masturbate every day, three, four times. God, why are you not doing? God says, I'm working in your life. And I explain to you a little bit further that why, why sometimes it takes a longer time. And we know that in all things, God works for the good for those who love Him, who have called have been called according to His purpose. So everything God does for us, He does it for your good. Come on, look at your friend again. We love and say, Daddy God truly loves you, my friend. Come on, say, Daddy God truly loves you, my friend. Yes. Sabah, hold on to His wit, W-I-T. Everything that God calls us to do is for our good. When it comes to our God, it's always about us and never about Him because He so loves us. He loves you. We don't see it yet. We don't understand it yet. But just believe that God loves you. Everything that He's doing, everything He's allowing, is you, you, right before your eyes, you're watching your neighbor becoming richer and richer and richer. You're, that's supposed to be me, but that's me. Time. You don't get it. I am the child of God. He's not. He's the Lord of the believer. He cursed God. He's in the 80s, but he's becoming richer and richer right in front of my eyes. Look at his house, two 
story, three stories, four stories. So you put right on top. And I'm thinking this going over here. And I'm a child of God. I don't get it. I don't get it. But God is everything I allow you to go through. If you are my child. You have to confidence. You need to have this confidence. Are you a child of God? Settle that first. Settle that you're a child of God and you can rest. No matter what situation you are in, if you're a child of God, you can rest. Say, I can rest. I can rest. Because he's working something good. Amen. Something super good. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Please turn to Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. And verse 34. I've never... Personally, I've, I've read this verse before, but I never meditated on this verse until I, until I prepared this sermon. So I like this verse now. Something is a verse I've never meditated, but I like it now. And it's chapter 10, verse 34. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism. Have you read that verse before? That God is not favoritism like you and I. I like this person better. If you do cupcakes, you just have cupcakes. Okay? I give you the tie, you get the backside of the chicken. <laughs> God is not like that. Thank God he is God. Okay, say amen. Amen. Why is, why is Jerome driving that car and why am I driving this car? It's about wait, trust God's sweet. There must be a reason why I'm not in the car yet. I just saw a red Volkswagen like yesterday. I was driving down from Raya. I was looking, I didn't know. For, thank God I didn't. I just smile at all, got my future car, and you go on. <laughs> you know, trust God's feet. Because it's not God's timing. And the Bible clearly, clearly tells us, don't pull your hair, don't go crazy. You just got to relax, baby. Amen? Amen. Amen. Bible says, do not worry. <laughs> do not worry, but it says, I don't have to worry about the car. The car is going to come. When? I don't know, because I'm not God. It's not my feet, it's His feet. So God is not favoritism. Doesn't mean oh, uh, just because um, just because uh, Tina has her own house now, living come here, you are renting, but you have living. You know, but I'm renting in one small room only. Tina has a whole house, many rooms, stay in KL wow. right now in, in the one of the richest area in KL. Wow. In what in what Kota Kemuning, rich people area. And she lives in one big house with so many rooms. She don't have to pay for a company pays. I'm looking at her. I have to what in, in Subang, in, 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 in not Subang, in one place, one horrible place in KL, maybe one place. <laughs> uh, Chinatown in, in KL, I'm staying in one room, a musical room, and all the house full of brothers. Look at Tina, I'm so angry. Now God knows what's good for her, but God knows what's good for me now. Are you listening? Because God is, does not favor Tiza more than Tiza. Tina more than me or anybody else. God is not favor Tiza. Shout amen. amen. Remove that from your heads. God is not, probably some of you are, do not have this problem, but some of you do, and that is why, at least my spirit, some people, some people have to hear this. You, you actually think God is favoritism. God is not. This trust is sweet, it's not favoritism. He's not. Hallelujah. Our God has the wisdom and the power to do things that benefit many. And that is why often He waits for the perfect time to work for the benefit of many. Listen, we do, when we don't have God, or when we don't trust God, we do so many things to benefit one person. Are you listening? Yes. I want to show you how God works. We do so many things, we do this, we do this, we do this, we do that, we pay, we do, we do, we do so many things to benefit me. But God does one thing, not to benefit you, because it's not for reason, one thing to benefit many. You can say amen. amen. That's how God works. And sometimes God doesn't give you talk, you want something now. And God can't give you now. If God gives you something now, somebody else has to pay for it on someone's expense. Because God doesn't love you alone. God is not favoritism. He loves everybody. If, I'm going, if God don't do this for you, Tom, but if He does this for you, it's going to affect. Do you know? God cannot do it for you. Get it? But we don't care. I want, it's me, myself, and I. I'm going to do this for the benefit me. All I care is about me. Because we are so small. We cannot look up. We cannot think out of the box. We can see so short. 
So God says, no, no, Tom, I, I can give you, God can give you now, but what God won't give you so that other people will suffer. When God does one thing, not for one people to benefit, God does one thing for many people to benefit, you can say amen. amen. And that's the reason why timing is so important when it comes to the kingdom of God. Hey, God can give you, God can give all of everyone right now. Huh? How many people can do anything? You can say amen. amen. When you look at the whole picture, God thinks of not you alone. Because it's not favoritism, he thinks of everybody. He thinks of your mother in law, he thinks of your father in law. You know, he thinks of every one of his children. If this is going to make you happy, your mother, Lucy, is also God's child. But it's going to make her unhappy, God's not going to give you yet. He has to work on something and just change her heart or change her heart and he will work on something. Get it? That's how God works. That's why sometimes timing is so important. But we don't know the timing. We only know our lives. But God knows the life of all of his children. In fact, God knows the life of everyone. You can say amen. amen. So whose time is better than yours or his? His. His sweet, not yours, not mine. So we've got to stop murmuring, stop complaining. Why is so long? Why is so Hold on, babe. Hold on, big boy. That's how God speaks. God loves you. Hold on. Not always because of somebody else. I'm saying, often it's about somebody else. Not because it's a whole big picture. Sometimes you're just not ready for it. You're just not, I'm not just ready for it. I'm not ready for it. You're not ready for it. It's like, it's not, it's not an excuse. Oh, like, it's easy to say that it's an excuse for not getting my parents. No. That's how it works. If you study the word of God, you know the heart of God, you recognize the character of God, you will see how, that's how God works. You will see how that's how God works. Because in His time, he makes all things beautiful. Everyone say, oh. 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 Our time, he made one thing beautiful. And for us, I don't care about him, her, me. But his time, he made all things beautiful for everyone. All of his children. If he God loves me this much, he loves you, Jenny, this much as well. Even though you may not be a pastor, but he loves you. The same. Because the word of God clearly says, God is not favoritism. Who can say amen? Amen. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you. No wonder we will fall in love with Him more and more. More truths like this we discover about God, the more our hearts are drawn towards Him. Our hearts will be drawn towards Him. Oh, God is God's favorite pastor, and I want to do the praises for 20 years. I'm not going to do my praises. Okay, he wants this. He wants praises. This is my first. Don't know. This is my second time having praises. Okay, and he's a pastor of favoritism. No, no, it's not like that. God is not favoritism. God is perfectly loving. Totally zero ounce of biasness in the heart of God. Zero ounce. I like this God has an amount of biasness. Like it, I don't know, we deny it, but that's a reality. That's why we need the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Let's turn to Proverbs chapter 3, please. Chapter 3 and verse 5 to 6 in the Word of God says this. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord. Not trust in yourself, trust in an intelligent person, but trust in the Lord. And it's so, it's so easy to give up this trust. But the, this is uh, written by uh, Solomon. Trust in the Lord. How many of you know that the Bible says this, the wisest man who ever lived? It's not a stupid man, huh? If, if I'm telling you, hey, trust in the Lord, who am I to tell you? I'm not that wise. But now the wisest man, come on, he's not just the wisest man. He is the richest man who ever lived. Who can say amen? amen. The wisest man and the richest man is telling us this. Trust in the Lord. He knows he's the, one, the wisest man who ever lived on the earth. King Solomon is this. Trust in the Lord. Not with some of your heart. Look at the word. With all of your heart. Everyone say all. All. Hundred percent. Not ninety percent. I trust God. Ten percent. I trust this person. Or fifty percent. I trust God. Then I divide the fifty. Ten percent. My father. Ten percent. My husband. Ten percent. My best friend. Ten percent. My pastor. Then no, no, no. Trust in the Lord with all these ratos, ratos. Don't trust in yourself. There's no room for yourself. You feel like trusting yourself and ask God, I feel this is what I should do, but Holy Spirit, you can able to speak loud and clear. You are so powerful, speak to me and I go in the right direction. Please stop me if I'm going the wrong direction. You will. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not 
on your own understanding. Verse 6. In all your ways, not some ways, all your ways, submit to Him. And what will happen? And He will make your path straight. Amen. Yes. Amen. Those always say amen. Truly this is amen. When we trust God to fulfill our needs, He will make things happen for us. Not at the expense of other people, whom we also love actually, but for God's timing to bless all of us, His timing is perfect. Instead of following our intelligence and emotions, we have to trust God, the Holy Spirit, and the Word of God so that many will benefit within us. For God to work, we need to trust Him to do things according to His will. Said it this way, His instruments, His time. Second Peter, please. Chapter 3. Another powerful verse. Why you are so slow? It's not slow. The reason your prayers are not answered not because it's slow. Because the timing is not right. This verse will tell you that. 2 Peter 3 9. The Lord is not slow. Everyone say not slow. It's not slow. So never say, God, why are you so slow? He's never so slow. It's just the timing is not right. I wonder, why are you so slow in helping me overcome this addiction? Why are you so slow? The Bible says, how can, how can God be slow? The Bible says, not never slow. He's not slow. He's not slow. It's the timing is not right. Trust his feet. 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. So the problem is not because it's slow. It's not because it's ignoring you. It's not because you have fallen to your sin. It's not because he doesn't favor you. No, 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 no. Timing is not right. Trust is weak. As some understand slowness, some don't think God is slow. Look at the look at the verse. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish. Say anyone. Anyone. Let's say. Judith wants to get married again and she in love. Yeah. Then Judith can, can handle my examples. And then deep in Lucy's heart, she feels that I don't want you to get married yet. I know you want to get married. Don't do it. <laughs> I want to get married. I'm, I'm just not ready for her to level. She's my darling daughter. I want her to be with me and stay with me. If she get married, she won't tell you because she knows, you know, in her mouth to say, get married, go fast, fast. Okay, I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm so old, I'm 60 over years old. I'm 60 over. She get married and she's my only daughter. Let's say only daughter. I can't let her be a bad she won't tell you. You know, I said, she said, oh, Jade, it's okay, you, your mama will be fine, you just give me a follow your mama, mama will be fine, you know, by the heart. God loves you, God loves her. God will have to change your heart first before God is your man. And God can change your heart. Mm. Are you listening? Yeah. Often the things, God, when God works something, it's not about will. Change your heart is one of the biggest miracles of God, you can say amen. 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 You might also change Mama, I won't marry, but I want you to come wherever I go. I'm your only daughter. Where I go, you go. <laughs> I mean, this is what works. Seriously. Look at this first, I'm saying, look at this first, see? Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish. Anyone. He doesn't want you to perish. He doesn't want your mother to perish. So God wants all of his children to flourish. Who can say amen? He doesn't just care for you, but he also cares for that woman who is going to be 70 who has only one daughter. He cares for both. That's how God works. He doesn't want anyone to prepare himself. He's not like, okay, I want to get married now. I'm 20 something already. I want to be married. I want to get married. I don't care. I don't care. That's not God. God, you have to be myself and I see you. But God doesn't. Amen. He doesn't want anyone to perish. As much he loves you, this much he loves your own mother, this much also. So that's how God works, and this is just an example. So sometimes, like, why me, me, me? But because it's going to look at the whole big picture. If I do this for you know, huh, then Jerry's going to suffer. Hold on, not ready. Let me change Jerry's heart first. Then he, he, he works like that. He doesn't want anyone to perish. But we don't think of anyone because we always think of ourselves. We, we, don't, we don't know better. Then God is patient with us. Say, He is patient with us. Yes. That's the best part. He is patient with us. We complain, I don't care, I don't care. I don't understand. My son walked on the earth for 33 years. He has been a man. He understands understand every temptation. Jesus understands every temptation. Jesus understands every struggle of a human being. 
like someone, someone wrote a little illustration. The human being, for a human being to understand the life of an ant, the human has become an ant. You look at the ant, you know, I don't understand how they can look like that. What kind of life is this? Just carrying the food one row, like that. One row of ants just carrying the food. That's all that. But then, so for me to understand, like, how do we come? I want to understand how the ants, what the life of an ant so has become an ant. Become an ant. And that's how that's happened, that's happened to Jesus. We are like ants. Jesus became one of us. The Almighty Jesus, the darling, heaven's darling, left heaven, the glorious heaven, where angels bowed down, and he left and became one of us. So that he understands us. So he understands how evil we are. He understands how hungry and thirsty, how needy we are, how desperate we are, how funny we are. He understands all because he has become one of us like the ants. Are you listening? So nobody really understands. But this is because he understands this means he's going to give you and then when other people are going to suffer because of you. No, no way. He loves everybody. And that's good news. I want to worship the kind of God. I want to serve the kind of God who loves my brothers and sisters, not just me alone. Amen. Amen. What it is, come on. I know of some people in the homes who talk about heavenly parents, talk about earthly parents. They love the eldest daughter. They love the youngest daughter. They don't, give, they don't care about the middle daughter. I, that's not the way. That's not the way. So our God is not like that. He loves every son of his. He loves every, he loves every daughter of his who can say Amen. Amen. He's never going to bless you when other people suffer. No way it's going to happen. Remember that. Okay? No way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We can't finish that verse. Instead, he's patient with you. 2 Peter 3, 9, second part. He said, he's patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Hallelujah. Love is patient. I said this in a free fellowship recently. Love. We are supposed to love God. We are supposed to love others. And what's the first element of love? Patient. The Bible says love is patient, love is kind, love is this, that. But the first thing the Bible says love is what? Patient. Hello, friend, love is patient. Love is patient. So be patient with God. Be patient with God. I love you, God. I can't be patient with you. Then you don't love God. I love you. What is that? I can't be patient with you. I don't love God. I'm lying. What nonsense? I love you, Dino. I I'm not patient with you. I love you, Dino. <coughs> Mommy, Mom, I love you, Mom. I'm not patient with Mom. I don't love my Mom. So don't say you love if you're not patient. Because the first element of love is Patient. We are supposed to love God. In other words, be patient with God. We are supposed to love others. Be patient with others. We are supposed to love ourselves. Be patient with yourself. Because love is patient. Amen. Amen. Trust God's feet. If you have no patience, don't love God, and you not trust God's feet. Because His timing means going to be patient. His timing. Hallelujah. Love is patient. As lovers of God, we have to be patient for God to choose the timing and His his choice is not because of his uh, arrogant. No, because I, I explained earlier. God is not deliberately slow, but he waits to do one thing at the right time for, so that many will be beautiful blessed. So what do we do while we wait? What do we do while we trust God's wit? W-I-T. This is very important next time I'm going to say. So what do we do? Yeah, I'm going to be patient. Yes, okay. I'm going to be patient. Help me, Holy Spirit. So what do I do? Do nothing? Three things. First, Rest at the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ. Learn to rest. Like the woman who came and put the alabaster bar uh, jar at the foot of Jesus. He just rested. He just cried. She took her hair and washed the feet of Jesus. He just rested. Others condemned her. Ooh, what a woman she is. If only Jesus did. But he just rested. She cried. He just rested. And Jesus said, I love you. We have to rest. So while we trust God's feet, He's not answering our prayers yet. For his divine reason, we rest at the feet of Jesus. Number one. Number two. We continue serving our Heavenly Father. While we rest, the Spirit of God lead us, we serve God. We are talking about the three persons in God. With Jesus, we rest at his feet. With the Father, we serve him. While we are waiting, trusting his feet, we serve the Father. Come to the third person, the Holy Spirit. What do you do? We enjoy sweet fellowship with the Holy Spirit daily. Do you remember that? Yes. While we are trusting God's sweet, our prayers are not answered yet. What do we do? 
We rest at the feet of Jesus. We serve our Heavenly Father. And we fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Fellowship means friendship. Friendship, have friendship with the Holy Spirit every day. Spend time with the Holy Spirit. Complete Father and the Holy Spirit. Okay, while you, while, you, while you trust in this week. Please turn to Romans chapter 8. And verse 31. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. Verse 32 He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him? Graciously give us all things. Everyone say all things. All, all things. All things, but it is time. Why? Because he has a genuine, authentic reason. Okay, all things is all things. And if God is for us, even people are stopping that box, that uh, box, what box I did? Often coming to my life, but God is for me, He can stop all they want, but it's going to come into my life. Amen. 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 People try to break my friendship with my, my good friend. People are saying in the religion, but if God's will, if God is for me, and God will his friends for me, they can say it, do whatever they like, but his friends is going to be mine. Are you listening? Yeah. If God is for me, nothing can come against me. And if I have, and we are to have the confidence that I can only enjoy this first, this promise, if I have the confidence in God's truth. Do you have the confidence that God is saying to each and every one of us, men and women, brothers, just listen, if God is for you, Nothing can come against you. Fear not, fret not, worry not, because God is for you. Shall we? Amen. 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 Amen.